Tavleen, I want to bring you in on Amritpal Singh. Uh, you know, a couple of days ago on this program, you said, uh, let's not make the mistake of the 80s. Let's arrest this guy and talk to him. One, we haven't arrested him. Uh, he's now gone to Haryana, according to the Punjab police. Uh, two, we, you know, we were at the Gurdwara where he hid. We, uh, we were told by eyewitnesses there that he held the Granthi at gunpoint. Uh, he took away the Granthi's um, uh, uh, phone so that the Granthi couldn't alert anybody. He took away the Granthi's son's um, uh, clothes so that he could move from a blue turban to a pink turban and escape. And the Granthi was so terrified, he didn't tell anyone for days till the CCTV camera footage actually came out and the rest, as they say, is now well known. Uh, do you still believe that, that this is a man who should be spoken to. Uh, you know, a number of people in Punjab are also saying no Sikh actually runs away. This is a this is a charlatan. Uh, why should we be talking to a charlatan? What do you think, Kabir? The whole thing, in my view, has been very badly handled, right? I actually believe that Amritpal Singh is some someone has propped him up from somewhere. I'm not sure where. But exactly like Pindravali was propped up by people that we don't want to go into the details of, where did this guy come from? And why suddenly is the media, the whole of the media, making him into a hero? Now, there's one point that I couldn't make last time, but I really would like to make this time. Do you know there has never been support in Punjab for Khalistan? There is support in Canada and in you know, in some parts of the United States and maybe in England, in Punjab, after the worst violence against the Sikhs in Delhi, nobody asked for Khalistan. In Punjab, after Blue Star, there were people, there were villagers walking towards the Gurdwara to save the Gurdwara. It had nothing to do with Khalistan. So, you know, there's been a lot of rubbish and you know I, I see the media going on about these Khalistani thugs so you're really doing the same mistake which is you're putting every sick into uh, into the dock to say listen we're not really Khalistanis so you know what are we making this fuss about the police needs to really re-examine what they did uh, this man's father said he was here last night why didn't you arrest him from here why this kind of dramatic allowing him to go out in a con in a big procession and making a drama about it and then you arrest everybody except him you know it's there's something very odd very murky about what's going on in punjab and that is what is more worrying than amrit pal singh being arrested or not what about what's happening with, between India and the United Kingdom? A couple of days ago, you said, you know, we shouldn't get so upset. But when the flag was defaced, uh, not, you know, and then again, despite India's uh, outrage, you saw these Khalistani, and this time I'm using the word Khalistani because they're self-declared Khalistanis. They are Khalistani. uh, they're standing, yeah, they are Khalistanis yeah. outside the High Commission. What, do, what, what did you feel as an Indian? Do you feel the United Kingdom is sort of uh, taking this seriously enough? Well, you know, I mean, I frankly don't care what the United Kingdom does or does not do. It's a small group of lunatic fanatic six. You know, I mean, put them away if you want to do whatever you want uh, to, to what they did was extremely offensive, very wrong. It's like Deep Sidhu, who, by the way, was the, you know, the, the big uh, before what's his name, Amrit Pal Singh. There was Deep Sidhu. Deep Sidhu goes onto the Red Fort and puts up the Nishan Saab, not the Khalistani flag, the, the Nishan Saab of the Sikhs. He puts it up there. He gets bail, I think, in days or hours. How, why? Who? How does he get away with it? You have Umar Khalid in jail for two years under these uh, laws. So what is going on? Who was Deep Sidhu? Why, who was behind him? Why was it so easy for the Home Ministry to decide that he deserved bail? I mean, he did something much more offensive than a lot of people who haven't been given any chance of bail. So, you know, I mean, you re we all need to really think about what is seriously going on. Is somebody doing this so that the 24 election can once more be about all oh, the great Hindu Rashtra being attacked by these mad six or whatever? Whatever's going on is wrong. And, you know, we've had no transparency from the home minister 
or the government of Punjab on what is really going on. So, you know, and the, and the media has, I'm afraid, been totally reckless in its, uh, you know, in, in accepting the press, it's press release journalism that we see. Oh, he has ISI links. Did any reporter investigate that? No, it was given to you in a police briefing. You know, oh, yes, yes, this is what he does. And this is, it's all. But he, but he is self, just, just to say, I don't know about his ISI links, but the ISI has long backed Khalistan. We know that. Can I have personally you, seen but, Babar. But I want to interrupt you. I have seen, but, I have seen Babar Khalsa. I've seen Babar Khalsa terrorists in Punjab roaming free in the lobbies know, of Lahore and Islamabad's five-star hotels. All right. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Pakistan, the last time round, exploited a situation that was already there. They didn't start it. This is the mistake that we make. I mean, you know, of course, they wanted to start it, but they can only create real trouble if the Sikhs in Punjab want Khalistan, which they don't. What they do want is for the drugs that come across the border that have made almost every other Jat Sikh boy ineligible for the army or the police because he's, he's become a junkie. Why are we not discussing that? That is the real harm that Pakistan has done. 